Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another new day. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe any one of us can please lead in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for your mind and new every day. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the gathering. Lord, you have gathered us all here today, Lord God, to learn, to study, to meditate upon your word. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, enlighten our spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, Father God, that we may understand your word in a better way, Father God. Lord, we also give ourselves into your hands father god every distractions will remove in the name of jesus father god i pray i bless our dear pastor lord god i pray and ask you to anoint him as he as he uh, teaches us your word father god lord let your word be sown in a good ground father god and let us reap a good hundred hundredfold harvest father god for your kingdom lord we thank you in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. amen amen thank you rosalind thank you okay so last week we've been uh, talking about the the ministry of the teacher and how uh, you know jesus was our best example we looked at that uh, two classes prior to this um and then we also saw how the teacher the ministry of the teacher was in the early church so we looked at you know uh the how Apostle Paul also in the book of Acts, uh, uh, we see that he established churches and there were teachers raised up. The church in Antioch, the church in uh, the, the Roman church had a lot of teachers as well. And then the ministry gift of teaching and how, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. So, uh, yes, we prepare, we have to go through the word we have to spend time in god's word uh, but the holy spirit can bring revelation into our hearts in such a way uh, that can really you know enlighten not, uh, not enlighten but it will uh, really bring a, a deep revelation into our hearts it can open uh, truths that we never really understood right uh, so we looked at last week the teacher in the early church how uh, you know, some very important points uh, was, you know, ensuring sound doctrine and the whole aspect of women teachers. Right? Uh, we looked at that, uh, you know, why Paul uh, said in, you know, First Timothy 2, he said, I don't allow a woman to preach. So I hope we're all clear on that, right? Uh, it's important that we understand uh, why Paul said it, because if we don't, uh, a simple sentence or a simple verse like this can be taken out of context and completely thrown out of proportion and uh, you know the whole the whole aspect of uh, you know women teaching uh, changes right so we must be uh, you know when when we are teaching we must be convicted and convinced of something right you can we can't teach something we are not convinced about right uh, so we must ensure that we know it. Okay, we 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 understand why these things come up, right? These questions, um, and then we also looked at raising up good teachers um, as a leader. The most important thing uh, is to raise up other leaders, right? And uh, and we see that in the church in Jerusalem, we see that in the church in Antioch, and we see that even in the early churches, uh, there was this whole you know, uh, way or a method that people use to raise up leaders. The Lord Jesus raised up many leaders, and without leaders to take on the next, uh, you know, generation or the next uh, task that is there, without leaders we won't be able to function. Right? Uh, remember, ministry is not a one-man show. Right? It's not a one-man show. Uh, the Lord Jesus Himself. Uh, being god he came into this world and as a human being he knew that we need to work as a team right and there was a reason he chose the 12 there was a reason that he trained them because 
a, a sign of a great leader is the number of leaders he will raise up. Right? Uh, and so as teachers and in ministry, always look to raise up people uh, or other leaders who can replicate what Jesus did. Right? Uh, now, I'm not saying that raising up leaders is going to happen overnight, right? Uh, nor is it going to happen in six months or one year it may take time it may take uh, you know five years ten years uh but we are called to do that right uh now though you know when we talk about raising leaders this this it's a big area right so uh, raising up leaders sometimes uh, we may look at people and make judge make judgment upon them okay i don't think this person can do it or maybe they failed in a task that you've given them. We feel, OK, uh, I don't think we can do this. right? And so that is why, as, as teachers, as leaders, we need wisdom. right? We need the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because or, or, if we lead with our flesh, it's very easy to disqualify people. And say, hey, last time I gave him or her this task, it was not done. So it doesn't look like I'm going to give it again. Uh, but that's not how Jesus, uh, you know, uh, did his ministry, right? He looked at Peter and he looked at his disciples with love. He said, yeah, you were all, you know, you were not there when I needed you the most, but doesn't mean that you're not leaders. You're not, you have things ahead. I have the plans for you and uh, they are going to be for the ministry. So, so raising up leaders, this is, especially for those in full-time ministry, maybe in the pastoral team or uh, you've got your own ministry, um, you know, don't be insecure to raise leaders. Never be insecure to raise leaders. Uh, now, picture this, right? Imagine you are a worship leader, right? Just an example, right? Imagine you're a worship leader and another person comes into your church who is better than you in playing guitar, better than you in playing keyboard, and is a very good worship leader. Now, my responsibility, right, as a as a person in the ministry, as, as since we are doing God's work, my responsibility must be to give this person the right opportunities and elevate him to the call that God has for him, him or her. Right? The moment I say, what if I give him an opportunity and they like his worship more and the church likes his worship more than mine, I have failed. Right? And we see that happening not only, you know, I just gave the example of worship, but there may be people who are, uh, you know, in, in preaching, in teaching, in, in anything, in, in ministry as a whole, right? There may be people who are, who are better than us in what we are doing. We may be doing it in 10 years. We may be doing it, uh, you know, for example, preaching for 10 years. All of a sudden, this young person may come right just one year in ministry but he has this beautiful way of teaching and preaching what will we do now we must question ourselves right we must guard our hearts uh, against any kind of pride or any kind of feeling of insecurity right uh, and we at apc we always believe that when our identity is in christ right uh, whether whether people you know uh, it's very less in at least in APC. We, we don't really feel that oh, this person has to like us or that person has to like us. We do what God has called us to do, and we follow God's word. Live godly lives. Live honorably. Live with integrity. Raise up leaders, and and that's a sign of good leadership, right? Uh, and so, as teachers, raise up other teachers. Right uh, uh, now, doesn't mean that you know you you have to like sit with one person and keep teaching him. No, over time, right? Over time, you can always give opportunities to people. Right? Uh, we were talking about this in um, in life groups uh, the other day, and uh, you know when when we start small groups and life groups, uh, we we look at potential leaders in a group and we say okay uh, 
you know, this person can be a leader. So we work with them. We spend time with them. We give them opportunities, right? Why don't you teach this week? Or why don't you prepare, uh, you know, a sermon for 30 minutes and see uh, if you can, if you'll be able to deliver the message. So many ways, right? Uh, and as you journey along, uh, you know, we will learn how to raise up other leaders, right? Uh, but never be in a place where you, we disqualify somebody just because of a couple of mistakes they make, right? We all make mistakes, uh, but they should be willing to take correction and continue on, right? Uh, so we saw that last week. Um, yeah, John has got a question, yes. Uh, let me just go there. To the question. Okay, two questions John has. What if the lack of commitment of the person affects the entire congregation? Okay, that's a good question. So, John, in case you see somebody who's a potential leader, the first thing we must do is, you know, prayerfully consider, God, is this something that you know, you feel that now we, of course, we are led by the Holy Spirit. So we pray and we say, God, I, I feel that this person can be a good worship leader. In the, I'm just using worship leader as an example, right? I feel that this person can be a good worship leader. Um, so I'm going to work with him, right? Now, this person, worship leader, right? Uh, he, he may not be regular every Sunday. He may be very, you know, casual in his attitude and, uh, you know, may not be too interested in church. Just comes maybe once in four in four weeks. He comes only once, and that he comes only because he's you know uh, rostered to lead the worship. Now, in these kind of situations, right? Uh, it takes time, right? You need to sit with them, right? Uh, you need to tell, uh, like you know, spend time with them, ask them, uh, you know what's happening with your life what do you think about this worship so it's a journey it takes time right uh, what do you think about this song hey why don't you you know develop in your uh, you know your musical skills uh, these are certain uh, you know uh, material that i found online you can you know learn from this now even after everything you have done you see that there's no interest from the other person. There's no, uh, you know, so for example, you've sent some songs and you said, hey, why don't we learn these two songs? Or you've sent some uh, reading material. They haven't even gone through it. We see that there's no interest from them. We've got to move on, right? Uh, because we can't forcefully say, okay, you are talented, so uh, you have to become the next leader. No. Right? Uh, you see, God has given us talents. Uh, and we have to use it for God's glory, uh, but we cannot pressurize people. Right? We cannot force them. Uh, leadership is something that should come from within, right? Uh, but there are situations when you know leaders who you know there are people who have come into church who seemed very very disinterested, uh, but over time over you know working with them giving them opportunities uh they've got the interest and they have you know really become good leaders so um when we say affects the entire congregation uh in, in what way john can you can you tell me in what way does it affect the entire congregation um let's say uh they've given an opportunity uh during the main service or even in one of the church service in the midweek yeah. but uh, and doesn't show up <laughs> or uh, like that so it affects the entire congregation right and yeah. they also lose the testimony uh, in, yeah. in, the, in those cases yeah 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 so if they so if they don't show up uh, now that is uh, you know we need to really see leadership it involves even as we raise leaders we we need to be a little stern uh, there's god's grace and we looked at that uh, Oh, that was in the book of Corinthians, we're teaching the third year. Uh, you know, there's God's grace and there is authority. We put it together, right? Uh, now, the Apostle Paul is telling the believers in uh, Corinth, uh, you know, uh, you, 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 there are people in the church who are sexually immoral, so I'll have to expel them from the church. But doesn't mean I'm not gracious because 
I'm protecting the entire church because of this one person, he can affect the whole church. So if a person has been assigned a task in the church and you see that there's a repetition of, you know, uh, disinterest or not showing up, if it affects the entire congregation, you got to take him out of uh, the leadership. You got to tell him to step back, him or her, you can tell them to step back. Hey, uh, I see that you've got many things happening. Uh, you know, uh, so one thing that at APC we follow is the two strike policy, right? Uh, now, other ministries can do three strike, four strike, whatever, but we, we, try, we do the two strike policy, right? So first time, uh, you know, they, there's an excuse. Okay, give them another chance. Second time, if the same thing repeats, uh, we, you know, we tell them to take a break. So the point is, we don't want the congregation to be affected. We don't want that to happen, right? Uh, it's with, um, let's say, the Apostle Paul and Corinth. Beautifully, he says that so he, he's looking at the whole church and he's telling this one man. I think it's First Corinthians chapter six. He's telling this one man, "You, the person who is actually immoral, he needs to be out of the church because his actions are affecting everyone in the church." Right uh, now, was he a believer? Yes. Was he uh, spiritually gifted? Could be because we know the church was uh, a church that was always flowing in gifts of the spirit. Uh, but there was a character issue, right? Um, and so where there's a character issue, they need to be worked with. And we see that there's no change. Um, you will have to make a hard decision. But you can ask them to step down, take some time. Uh, now, you'll get two responses. One, they'll say, how can you ask me not to lead? I've been a worship leader for 10 years. They may get offended. And the second response is, hey, I'm leaving the church. Now, these are responses we cannot control. Right, uh, and over time, hopefully, he will learn that you know this is how ministry is. But but nothing should affect the congregation, right? Because uh, the congregation is very important. Uh, they, you are the shepherd of the congregation, uh, so we need to you know uh, be sure of that, right? Uh, your second question is: What if the person who has a lot of potential to be a leader spiritually and talent-wise? but doesn't have a good testimony from others in the church? OK, that's also a very good question. So we must understand this, that we all are gifted in some way or the other. Right? Um, we can be musically gifted. We can be gifted in teaching or uh, you know, preaching in so many ways. Right? There are so many things that we are gifted in dance, art. Uh, all of these things. And these are all ways that we can serve in the church. Uh, now, if a person doesn't have a good testimony from others in the church, now, here's the first thing we must do. Go to scripture. What does the scripture say? First thing is have a witness. Right? Find out what is happening in this person. Why is this testimony out? Right? So, for example, there's a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a you know a youth leader right that's an example right a youth leader but there's this whole thing of you know uh, hey this youth leader is always talking arrogantly to everyone right he's talking rudely just because he's a leader now it's a serious problem right it's not like it's not a serious it's okay no he's a leader leave it no it is a serious problem because uh, as a leader we cannot talk rudely and harshly to people Right, to in the congregation. So, first thing you have a couple of witnesses. So, so, so somebody comes and tells you, you know, what this youth leader has been talking rudely to many of us. Now, don't immediately go and talk to him and say, "Hey, why did you do this?" Right. So, uh, that's where we need to speak with a little bit of wisdom. Say, "Okay, I'll handle this." So, we can probably call uh, the other folks, other youth, and say, "Okay, all of the get all the youth together." So this is what is happening in church. Uh, uh, so I heard that this is what's happening. Is there anybody else who feels that way? Now, some may say no. Some may say, hey, you know, his characters like that, but he's a good person. Some may say yes. So if you have, like, even three or four people saying the same thing, then it's something that you have to deal with. 
right? Three or four youths say, yes, he has been rude to me also uh, in various instances. Then um, you have we have to take time to correct him. We have to call him or her, sit with them, talk to them and tell them, see, this is what I've got. These are the, you know, the, uh, this is the feedback that I got from people within the church. These are the youth. And what do you think about it? So then you're having a conversation. They're trying to let him know that, hey, you can't just say whatever you want. And then you bring correction, right? Uh, through the word of God, bring correction. Uh, and then you ask them, you, you let them continue, right? Let them continue. Don't uh, ask them to step down and all of that, right? So you bring correction, you tell them, hey, uh, so let's not do this. You need to change the way you speak. You know, you may be the worship pastor, you may be, or, or the youth pastor, and you may be very talented and all, but character is also very important. So you change your ways. Now you give them a time, right? Tell them, okay, in three months, uh, we'll meet again, right? And after three months, uh, you know, in those three months, watch him. Uh, right? It's not like you're uh, doing some, you know, investigation work on him. Uh, but basically, you're just watching his life. You're just trying to see uh, that things are all right. Uh, you're also trying to talk to the youth. Now, why are you doing this? It's not because you're doubting him, but you're tr you're protecting the church, right? You can go up to them also every month. Just talk to them. Uh, now, if the testimony does not change, and we see that he continually sinning. There's this continuous thing of you no. Know, there's no change of uh, the way he speaks or the way he, uh, uh, you know, he's still being harsh with people, uh, harsh with the youth. You know, I, I remember this one youth uh, pastor in, in another church. In this happened in North India, and this pastor said, uh, he, we were there that day, and he began to shout at the, well the youth because they were having tea and it was you know five minutes extra something i think it was the session had already started but they were having tea now i know that these youth were you know doing all the work they were carrying the chairs and you know doing all the hard work so they just came for a tea but the session had started and this i think it was the associate or the youth pastor who came and shouted at them right uh and immediately, I, I I got to know that this you know this is something not right. Right uh, now, why am I saying this? Uh, because sometimes we may, uh, you know, as uh, like especially youth, we need to know how to handle. You know, you know. Okay, these are elderly families. You know, we know how to handle them. Then there's youth. Uh, we must understand how to handle them. You can't say don't go to, uh, you know, movies don't go here don't we can't keep uh, saying all those things right especially if you're in a uh, urban city and then you got teens right no you can't say teens don't use instagram it's from the devil <laughs> you can't do that right uh so we must understand what's around us uh, but we must also be in a place where we say hey uh, be able to speak into their lives the testimony um, you know, this is what your life is, and this is what we must do. So, if that change does not happen, they have to step down. You have to make that decision, right? Uh, now, it may look very stern, but it's all right because you're doing what is in right in the eyes of God. You're doing what is scriptural. Right, and uh, uh, I encourage you read First Corinthians, uh, especially the chapter three to about chapter seven, and how Paul deals with the the people in the church. Right, uh, and we know that Paul was talks so much about grace. You know, everywhere he says, "By the grace of God, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ." But here he's saying to, so sternly, "Expel the immoral brother, take him out of the church, don't let him be there." And he was upset with the leaders saying, how can you tolerate this in, within the church? Right? Uh, and, and so the church is priority, right? the body of Christ. Uh, but we must also understand we're all people. Church is a group of people with different 
temperaments, different understandings. Uh, and so we, we need to develop that ability to, you know, uh, uh, we need that wisdom from God, right, to handle these kind of situations. Uh, but John, I think something that helped me was, uh, firstly, was not to look at talent first. Right? Because there are many people who are talented and they feel they have a right to be there. Right. They feel that, okay, because I know how to play guitar. Now, now in the whole church, only two of us, two of them know. So because I know how to play, so I, sh I have the right to be there. No, uh, they don't have the right to be there. Uh, it's, it's not about the talent, but it's about also the character. Uh, and so both must be in line. And I think that's a really long answer. I hope, John, that helped you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I have one more small question. Yes, Can go ahead. Ask? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, we we give opportunity for one person, and uh, due to one genuine reason, they are not able to do it. Mm. And after maybe <laughs> one month, two months, three months, we give one more opportunity, and another genuine reason comes up. <laughs> so uh, I mean, the reasons are quite genuine. Uh, mm. uh, I mean. Uh, but um, is it a sign or um, uh, can we still continue to give opportunity? Mm -hmm. See, uh, John, if the reasons are genuine, then you can give them an opportunity again. Right? So, for example, if this person is working, right, uh, he says, no, they've not given me Sunday off. Uh, I keep asking for it, but I have to work. So he has to go to work right you can't tell him quit the job you can't tell him hey talk to your boss i mean you can ask him request your boss but the boss is saying no so he can't come he wants to come to church but he can't right uh, and then another reason could be uh, and then maybe after three months he may come and say you know what uh, uh, my parents have been asking me to you know this happened to me right my parents have asked me to come with them to their church so i have to go with them uh, but I would love to serve whenever I can in this church. Now, these are tricky situations, right? Uh, but if they genuinely uh, can't come, it's a genuine reason, right? Parents want him to come. Um, so you give them another opportunity, but then before giving, it will be good to speak to them, right? And let them know what is volunteering in church means. It's not uh, visiting or guest visitors in church, right? Because uh, volunteering in church is a commitment, and and this is a commitment that we have. And so, you can probably put forth certain things before you, you know, uh, give them another opportunity. Uh, just put forth something. You know, what these are the Sundays. Uh, you know, you have to be available these two Sundays out of four. Uh, so, in example, October, November, December. Uh, so these three months, two Sundays each month, you must be available. Uh, uh, so you you let them know. Right? Uh, okay, this is the thing. Uh, now, if he still says no, but I'm working, then there's nothing more we can do. And you say, okay, then I can't put you in because you're working. It's a genuine reason. We're not angry with you, not upset with you, but uh, you can't come. So... Let me know when you can come, and we'll pu we'll put you in, right? Uh, but another important thing that we must see is whether they are uh, aligned with the vision of the church, whether they are aligned with you know. So, so there are times when you know people who can't come on Sunday they join a life group, or they are life group leaders and say, "Hey, I want somebody to come home and pray," or they want to be part of the church in certain events. But if you see a lack of interest in every area, uh, then I would say give some time, right? Uh, even as you give the opportunity, uh, you think about it. You know, you give some time. You see how it is, uh, but it all depends on you know your relationship with that person in the sense uh, even as you continue to as a pastor of the church you look at that person you know what kind of uh, what's his character what is his uh, you know why he's doing his intentions of uh, coming to church so you'll get to know all of that so uh, so you can give them opportunities but let them know it's a commitment right uh, and it's not like you're rostered and then sunday morning you say i can't come uh, no that, that doesn't work Right, because that again is going to affect the whole church. So, uh, so you can probably teach them, train them on importance of volunteering. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Thanks, John. Thanks.
there. Yes, Rosalind has a question. Uh, when a leader is raised by a pastor for nearly four years, during this preparation time, if God calls that leader to a different place to minister where he knows nobody, and when it is brought to the pastor about his new place and the pastor says no for it, what should the leader do? Obey God or obey pastor? Okay, this is this is a very, very common um, thing that happens all across in ministry, especially. So you go to a pastor, he chooses a young 20-year-old boy or a girl and trains them. And then for four to five years, they've grown up and now in the ministry, now they are ready to take on a good role in the church. But all of a sudden, this young boy or this young person youth says uh, i want to go and start youth ministry in another church right now what what do we do right uh, so there are different ways to look at this right? uh, firstly now i've I, uh, as a pastor i know how difficult it is when you know, people who are serving faithfully in the church, suddenly they have to move out. And I know how difficult it is, very difficult, because, you know, you know uh, I remember in church, there was this young boy who who did everything. One boy, right? Uh, he was from Orissa. Uh, and he came to uh, Karnataka in Manglo, and he did everything, right? He would, on Saturday evening, come, clean up the place, Sunday early morning, open the shed, connect the cables, connect. He would ask me, are you playing guitar or keyboard? I would tell him, okay, connect everything, you know, put on the laptop, put on the PPT, put on all the songs on the PPT. If there was communion, he will sit alone, one person, right? And after the church, he would clear up everything, take the dustbins, throw, no, take, take all the dust, throw it down, just you know, clean up the place, move all the chairs aside, keep the place ready for the next Sunday. Right? And eventually he had to go back to Orissa. I was so, you know, I was so sad. You know, he, you know, not because he's you know now who's going to do it, but I knew that, you know he's important to the church right he is important very very important uh, right and uh, he was a faithful leader uh, now in times like this Rosalind, people may move out right uh, now this boy went back to his hometown but there will be times when people move to other ministries now as a pastor our responsibility first thing is our responsibility is to raise up leaders, right? So we raised up leaders. Now the choice is up to him or her, right? If he or her feels that if I go to this ministry, I can grow and I can develop myself more. As a pastor, what I would do is I would release him. I would pray for him. I would bless him. And I would say, God, thank you for this person that four years he has served faithfully and now he's moving to something new or a new opportunity that's come his way. Bless him, continue to use him. May his life be a blessing, right? Now remember what you have sown in that person's life is never going to go for waste, right? So it's good as a leader to release them, let them go, let them do what they want to do. Now, a question that we must ask ourselves also is why you want to leave, right? Is it that I am not providing, as a pastor, am I not providing you with opportunities, right? So for example, this person is very interested in starting a small group, but I keep saying, no, 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 now is not the time, now is not the time. Then he loses interest and he or she feels, you know, uh, if I go there or to this ministry, they are willing to, you know, make me a small group leader. And from a small group leader, I can become another, you know. So she's, he or she's willing to move because there's no opportunity given here. So that is a very important question that we must ask ourselves. Right? So we can ask, uh, you know, before you release the person, you talk to them and say, um, 
is there any reason you want to go there right? she may he or she may say you know what over there uh, i may get this opportunity right so what you can do is say what if we start something in church here and you can you know head that ministry do you think you'll be able to stay back and if it's the same thing most probably they will stay back right uh, but if they adamant and say okay no i want to do, look out for another ministry it's all right release them right uh, because we are in no place to hold on to people right we, we should not as leaders right we are called to shepherd them we are called to build them and then they may move on right they may move on so so it's important to obey god uh, more than you know the you know, pastors there uh, but even as they move on you, as a pastor make sure we do it in the right way now when we look around we see that you know they fight with the pastor and leave and this pastor i you know the main pastor says this pastor i you know for 15 years he was with me i i did everything with him in ministry now he just you know he backstabbed me and went away uh it is very sad to see that right and i feel that uh, you know i tear up because these are things that i've heard and it's very sad because uh, as 15 years a person is working in the ministry so as a senior or as a pastor who was with him for 15 years must be willing to let him go i can't hold on to him and say till the end till i die you should be with me i cannot do that release and let go now if there's any bitterness or some misunderstandings do your best to uh, you know uh, try to resolve those misunderstandings uh, but let go right do not hold on right uh, and it 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 can be difficult it can be painful uh, but we we cannot hold on the more we hold on we're trying to be authoritarian and then there's no place of forgiveness and it just becomes a very uh, you know uh, offensive situation this pastor is angry with this pastor and i i think i've mentioned this before we went to a pastors meeting many many years back and there were two groups of pastors you know they were sitting in different places and i i thought to myself what, what's happening it was so evident and there was this feeling of something wrong happening and so i asked the pastor what's uh, no why don't we all sit together he said no 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 we don't talk to those pastors so what happened and these are you know pastors who are uh, in their 50s and their 60s been in ministry for so long so what happened no he was in my church uh, and now he he left and he went and he started his own church and now he thinks his church is better than mine and so they were not talking to each other and i thought to myself are we building our kingdom or god's kingdom it's good he went and he started another church no he is blessing many other lives let him do what he has to do uh, uh and, and so we must come out of the mindset right uh, let go let go of people let them do uh, what they have to do uh, the best example uh, uh i mean not the best example but a, a good example would be uh, apostle paul you know when uh, uh they were after they finished their first missionary journey uh now uh, Paul and Barnabas uh you know they went uh, on their first mission, missionary journey and in the middle somewhere in the in the first mission journey in Galatia uh after they finished Galatia uh uh I forget his name Mark John Mark so uh John Mark says I I can't come I can't do this so Paul gets upset and says okay go you know I'll go on my own with uh, you know takes chooses uh, Silas and goes on uh but there was a complete separation there right over a small issue barnabas says let's take mark paul says never this guy disowned us in the first missionary journey there was a, such a sharp dispute they went their separate ways but paul does not you know uh, we don't see that paul says okay i'm never going to talk to what happens later on he says bring mark he is helpful for me in my ministry and he says that in the end he says bring john mark bring him here so most probably you know they met together 
they met, they did the work again, they continued to minister together, right? Uh, so it was not something that caused division. So, you know, a, a good book to read uh, would be, uh, let's put that in the chat. Get this uh, book online itself. You can download it. Divine Order in the City White Church, and it, it talks about issues like this, right? Uh, what happens when you know people move out, and how we as leaders must behave. So, uh, but I hope that answers your question, Rosalind. It's it's good to let go and uh, not hold on to people. Uh, yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, we had a lot of questions. So uh, what we'll do is we'll probably, any other questions? Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Okay. Uh, so just a follow-up question to what uh, Rosalind asked. Uh, what if it is from the um, uh, other perspective? Like, uh, we do understand uh, the importance of letting go. Right. But when we look at from the person's perspective, uh, is it okay to switch or continue there itself? Or how do we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as leaders, we can only suggest them, right? Uh, uh, we we cannot force somebody else, right? So we could just suggest, hey, uh, so if this person is moving to another church and or another ministry, and you feel that. You know he can grow better here or he can you know there's more opportunities here uh, but if they still want to move on uh, if we have to let go right uh, uh, because we can't force somebody to stay back and then they come and they sit in church and they say hey, pastor's asking me to come uh, you know we don't want that added and that kind of uh, this thing we want them to come out of uh, expectancy and, and and so uh from their perspective we can just talk to them tell them now as leaders we can just speak into their lives right we, uh, the moment we try to force or dictate things what we should do uh, then you know it, it, i feel it won't be right because uh, it's their choice right um, uh, and 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 so even uh, it, when we look at what's happening in ministry many people may move out many people may come in you know many times you know people say hey i uh, uh, i want to go here and do ministry or i want to go to this country or i want to go to the village and do ministry i want to do this and that uh, so many people have different uh, you know callings or different uh, visions in their heart and so uh, if if you feel that this is something that will take them away from their calling uh, you can talk to them but then we cannot force them so let's see uh, i feel that you know you can do this and while you're doing this you can also think about doing the other thing that you're interested in uh, but again we can just tell them because the moment we force people and something goes wrong it comes back to us right uh, uh, and i think there was plenty of examples of um, you know married couples at times you know tell them okay you're a good proposal and all of that and then after the marriage some problem after oh the pastor said they are the best, they are working out now because of that we got married uh, and now see all the problems you're facing all because of pastor no, we don't want those things so give them the freedom and of course you know god will speak to them now we can't spoon feed people uh, you have to do this now. Give them the option, and they can, you know, do it their way. Uh, but it's sad to see when you know uh, people drift away from uh, ministry or from God. Uh, it's sad to see that we can pray for them. Uh, otherwise, just 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 talk to them. That's it. That's not. That's the most we can do. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take a break. We'll come back at 10 o'clock. And uh, after that, we'll we'll begin with chapter 8. It's good. It's good that we had these questions. It's, it's good that we can uh, discuss and uh, talk about these things. Uh, so we look at chapter 8, the restoration of the ministry of the teacher. We'll come back at uh, 11 o'clock. Sorry, that's 10 o'clock. Yeah, sorry. Yeah.